yo, what? Yo, lo, like yo, like what's going on here? Like, like hello, hello, yo, this is insane Bill Maskello. You might want to know who I am. Why, who are you? This is insane Bill Maskello here. Bill be here in a few minutes, but I just wanted to talk to you like before Bill comes out. You understand? Because I'm the man who opens his shows sometimes when he does his like live shows. So what's happening here is that Doug Ward, the promoter from uh, from Awesome Wrestling Entertainment, was supposed to be here live with Bill, but he's not here. He's got the flu. So like get better to you. You understand? Bill will be here in a minute. Okay. So I just want to tell you people that I'm going to be in, in New Orleans too at Awesome Wrestling Entertainment Table. You understand? At times during WrestleCon. And I'm also going to open the act for Bill After when he appears for, for Kayfabe events at the International Hotel there. At, and you go to kayfabe events on like facebook and like twitter i'll tell you but but you gotta go like to awesome wrestling entertainment at wrestlecon to come see us all all right bill's gonna have his book and all that. now you want to know who insane bill mascolo is well easy you see i'm part insane clown posse as you see um part mill mascaris and i'm part Barry Manilow. And you can, when you come to my show, I'm going to wrap some Barry Manilow stuff. Oh, he's here. Billy's here. Hold on. I'm going to go. We'll be right back. In the meantime, you point to the WrestleMania sign. Hey, man, I hope you didn't mind me opening up the, the gig for you. Oh, no, no. Thank you so much. I didn't. I got stuck in traffic. I had no clue. So thank you so much. Take care. All right. Hello, everybody. Oh my goodness, I the traffic on the Pennsylvania Turnpike was a nightmare. Unbelievable. Whew. I finally got here. Welcome. Welcome. And I he did mention about uh, Doug Ward was supposed to be here and co-host the magazine with us this week, live and in person, but he's got the flu. Get better. Please. We uh no flu for you like uh IBM. IBM is insane, Bill Mascolo. Um, thank you for being here and making this show every week a big success. Now, next week, next week, next Thursday, there will be no live show. Boo. Yeah, I'm going to miss it, too, because I'm going to be in New Orleans, Louisiana, um, performing my one-man show. Go to kfabeevents.com, and then you can come see me and so many other big stars at Awesome, the awesome wrestling entertainment table at WrestleCon. Um, JJ Dillon is going to be there. Uh, the man formerly known as Ry Ryback, uh, CW Anderson, Short Sleeve Samson. And a lot of these people are going to be uh, at my show too. I got a confirmation, by the way, today that Sam Houston has, uh, has got, yeah, Sam Houston has got some entertainment things that he might premiere at my one man show. So now also at Awesome Wrestling Entertainment, I'll have my book. I will have uh, the championship office wrestling belt, the, uh, the gold belt, so we can pose for pictures and have such a good time. Uh, yes, the man known as Simon, formerly known as Simon uh, Gotch, will be there. And uh, beautiful Brittany will be there. And she, actually, she's going to introduce me on my show. So we have a lot to talk about. Everybody welcome, uh, cry back. Everybody welcome to the, uh, welcome to the magazine here. Yeah. So, um, again, no show next week, unless you come to the live show in New Orleans. I hope to see so many of you out there. So, uh, I've told you about, uh, Doug Ward from, uh, awesome wrestling entertainment was supposed to open for us today, but, uh, to introduce me here and then sit right next to me and co-host the show because we have two incredible guests today. Call your friends. Get them on. I am them. we got Jerry the King Lawler in just a few minutes. And then Bill Watts. 
Bill White, Cowboy Bill Watts, who is going to be doing an autograph session at the Awesome Wrestling Entertainment table alongside of his son, Eric Watts. If you watched my interview with Eric Watts, that was on uh, OneWrestlingVideo.com several weeks ago. This has been a dream of Eric's to sit next to his dad. You might the comb over. Oh, goodness. To sit next to his dad. What, what my director is telling me, oh, point to the mania sign. Of course, you have to do that. And But it's been a dream of Eric Watts to do something with his dad. And um, they contacted Doug Ward from Awesome Wrestling Entertainment. And uh, it's going to be at the AWE table at WrestleCon on, the, um, uh, on that Friday and Saturday of WrestleMania weekend. I am so psyched. I'll also... Uh, for some of you fans who asked me if I'll see them at the NXT show, I'm actually going to be at uh, Ring of Honor show this time. So hopefully I'll see you and I'll be at WrestleMania and the Hall of Fame. So let's uh, let's talk um, right now. The big story of the week, of course, is that Daniel Bryan mentioned that Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn will face he, Daniel Bryan, and Shane McMahon at WrestleMania. If Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan lose, then the suspension on Zayn and Kevin Owens is lifted. By the way, I know a lot of you are writing here, but we're again these. This is a magazine format, so we'll get to some of your uh, your comments a bit later. We want to stay on task here. So now, if you really think about it, you have two guys. You have Daniel Bryan, who was just cleared to come back, just cleared to come back you know, from these concussion syndromes and uh, and neck problem too and other injuries. And you have Shane McMahon, who was just diagnosed last week with uh, painful diverticulitis. Brock Lesnar had that. I had it. So you have two guys here who may, I mean, Daniel Bryan did show last week on SmackDown when he was drop kicking that uh, he still got it. He still got it. But how long can he do that? in a match. And also uh, hopefully Shane doesn't get kicked in the diverticuli. Is that right? Yeah, in the diverticuli area. Um, so that's the big story of the week. And right now uh, we are going to go to our columns of the week here, but it's been moved and I'm going to call it up right now. Uh, let's find out right now. Let's go to the gorilla position. <coughs> ah, I've been eating good and plenty before I came on. <coughs> I love good and plenty. If you want to bring me some, or if you're coming from Europe, brown tree fruit gums. <coughs> they make me cough, but I, I'd rather have it. So right now, let's go to um, Ryan Bowman at the gorilla position right here on the Bill After Video Magazine podcast. And let's find out who this week's wrestler of the week is ryan come on in and uh let's hear I'm it ryan bowman with the bill after video magazine podcast and here's our wrestler of the week to award our honor we travel far around the globe to the land of the rising sun oh. where zach saber jr made history late last week becoming the first british wrestler to win the vaunted new japan cup it was the culmination of a star making run for saber jr who went on a string of submissions to gain his wins Topping things off with a remarkable victory over the ace of New Japan, Hiroshi Tanahashi, yeah. one of the company's longtime stars. The win ensures him a shot at Kashiki Okada and the IWGP heavyweight title, making him the first Brit to challenge for that belt since William Regal 23 years ago. And in terms of his critics, his undying commitment to the submission style has endeared him to hard scrabble followers of technical wrestling, while his revolutionary approach has gained the attention of a new generation of fans. For making Tanahashi tap, for making old school cool, and most of all, old for making cool. history, like the 2018 New Japan Cup winner, Zack Sabre Jr., is our Wrestler of the Week. All right. Congratulations to Zack Sabre Jr. So this week, the Wrestler of the Week is not is not a WWE-based wrestler, not a, a Ring of Honor wrestler, not an Impact Wrestling wrestler. Uh, it's Zack Sabre Jr. And I had the pleasure of uh, seeing him compete in both – Germany and England when I was on tour there. And by the way, uh, 
kayfabe events and I are trying to work something out, trying to work something out that would bring me to the United Kingdom to do my um, my one-man show possibly later this year. So I want to thank them. And also, the weekly plug is also in for the only print magazine that I currently write for, and that is Britain's Total Wrestling Magazine. Find them on Facebook. Uh, it's, a, it's a really great-looking magazine. It's got uh, excellent pictures, columns, and I write a column every month called The After Files. And in number three here, I did a whole after file about my uh, history with Ray Mysterio Jr. Yeah, so please get that. And of course, the weekly plug is Wrestling Fix. I didn't know it was broken. That's right. My book, it's still available. And if you're coming to uh, WrestleCon and or my one-man show, you can get a copy of that there. Or you can get a copy of, I'm looking for it, there's so much stuff here. Or you can get a copy of my audio book where you can get them both. And by the way, at my uh, one-man show, C.W. Anderson will be in attendance. Short Sleeve Samson, Sam Houston, and uh, some other surprises. And... Ali Marafi from Qatar Pro Wrestling is coming by. He says he has something special to show us all and to give to me. So I'm very excited about that. Okay, we have a lot to talk about and a lot to get to. So let me uh, plug in the Apto phone here and see if we can uh, get a hold of uh, the first interview for this edition of the video magazine. Hope you people are enjoying this, by the way. I love doing this for you every week. But then again, don't say, ah, oh, you're not doing it next week. We will be doing it the Thursday after WrestleMania. So let me uh, put in Jerry Lawler's phone number here. And let's see if we can get him. Let's see, hopefully he's there. We don't want to get his cell phone. We don't want to get his answering machine. Hello. Is this Jerry Lawler? It is. The King Jerry Lawler? Let me see. Let me check my card. Check oh, it. yes, it is. Me. It's on your business card. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for being by your phone after it rang two times. I was going, boy, you know, we, you are live right now on uh, one wrestling video.com. And, uh, I'm, we've, I'm so excited about this film because I, I just, we, I, you know, you called me yesterday and I did reminded me that we were going to do this today. And then of course I forgot. And now <laughs> we just sat down and I, in a Chinese restaurant called Red Koi here in Memphis, a Japanese rather. And I uh, just sat down to eat and then I looked over and my phone was ringing. I said, Oh my gosh! I forgot I got to do this podcast. Oh my god! And again, we're we're like, what are you having for uh, dinner? Uh, I'm having the shrimp tempura, oh. a little bit of clear soup here, and uh, then I'm going to have a. But uh, uh, I get the shrimp. No, yeah, shrimp uh, roll. Okay. Yeah, shrimp roll. Well, I, I see now. I hate like I hate to disturb you during dinner. Now, but uh, are you? Are oh, you I, know, I know you hate to, but I bet you're going to, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. No, no I, I, Bill, you know how that happens. Every time you're sitting at a, you're sitting at a restaurant and you see somebody and you know, oh boy, they're going to come and ask me to sign an autograph or take a picture with them while oh, yeah. eating. And yeah. the first thing they always say is, "I really hate to ask you this." But, and I always stop right there and say, "But you're going to anyway." Are you? <laughs> Now, see, I, I'm a creature of habit at Japanese restaurants. There's only one thing I like. Chicken, really? What's that? Chicken teriyaki. That's the only thing I eat at Japanese restaurants. I well, Peyton is there, and he's having chicken teriyaki. How old is Peyton? Peyton's 10. Right. Peyton's got excellent taste. <laughs> said you have excellent taste. And what is, what is Lauren having? Lauren is having some clear soup, a salad. What else do you order, babe? Oh, see this can I can't, I can't eat any I can't eat anything. 
This can only happen uh, live because we're live we're now. Live. Okay. So, so uh, uh, do you like raw fish too? Do you eat all that kind of stuff? No, I know. No, no. Lauren does, but I cannot. No. The only kind of the only kind of uh, fish I eat is cooked. Yeah. See, I never understood the the lore of uh, uh, uncooked food. I mean, they they do that in a lot of countries. Oh, I know that. But, but you know, down in the south where I'm from, they call that bait. <laughs> do they really? And that then people yeah. from other countries come here and they have something cooked and they'll go, oh, this is cooked. It's terrible. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Yes. So I wanted to talk to you about you. Uh, uh, tell everybody what you're doing WrestleMania weekend, where you'll be and where they can come and see you. Well, we're going to head down there on Wednesday morning, and then um, my first WWE, my first tour of duty, or first thing, good Lord, just to know we are up. <laughs> she's, getting, she's getting all the info right now as well. Anyway, we want to head down Monday morning, and I've got Wednesday morning. I have a, something, um, I have dinner with the contest winner. Okay. And Laura and I are going to go to dinner with some, and I don't even know what kind of contest. They won, but it's some some kind of contest. Whenever we're going to Pro- do that, probably have dinner with Jerry Lawler. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the contest winner. <laughs> I'd be I'd be upset if I, that's all I want. But anyway, uh, I, I, maybe it means I got to pick up the tab too. I bet that's a possibility. That's a possibility. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You're a Coca Cola <laughs> guy, so tab is not involved. Forget it. Oh, <laughs> no tab. No, no right. tab. No tab. And then what about the rest of the weekend? Then Thursday I'm doing something. I'm not sure exactly what, but uh, man, I can't remember exactly That's what right. I'm doing. So, it, it, but anyway, some Thursday. Maybe but, you'll show up at my show if you're if you're available. Oh yeah, you're. Um, you know, I got that uh, definitely on my calendar. If you're available, your one man show. One man like show that. that I do. It's it's uh, called it's. Uh, patterned after the book, which you were so gracious to write the forward to, is Wrestling Fixed. I didn't know it was broken. So you'll be doing that at 5 o'clock uh, New Orleans time. And uh, the show opens with um, um, Insane Bill Maskelow rapping. And he's a uh, uh, he's a combination of Mil Mascaris, uh the Insane Clown Posse, and Barry Manilow. So you got to come see him. Bill Mascaris, I mean, uh, Bill Mascaris and Barry Manilow. And the Insane Clown Posse. Yes, and the ICP as well. And then uh, the Hall of Fame. Then I'll do that. Yeah, I'm I'm signing somewhere at WrestleCon early Friday morning, like from 10 to 1. And then I go over and we do the Hall of Fame Saturday night, or or, uh, Friday night. And then Saturday, I'm signing again at the uh, WrestleCon. And then, of course, the NXT. I'm not in. I'm not involved with the NXT on Saturday night. Okay. Then, of course, Sunday is is WrestleMania. Yeah, that that event um, that they hold every year at uh, yeah, WWE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I'm going to be doing uh, part of the pre-show on uh, that, and then uh, I don't know what if. Uh, the, the, well, the Hall of Fame is Friday. Friday, that's right. They moved it. I, I guess I've you, been corrected. Over no, here. no, no. T- tell Peyton that they moved it. Now it's Friday. Mean? It's Friday night instead of Saturday. Yeah, it's always yeah. Friday. Yeah. No, it used. I believe it was Saturday, and NXT was it, Friday. It used to be, but that's yeah. before they did the yeah. uh, NXT deal. Yeah. Three so now, now one of, one of the people that you've known most of your professional career. Uh, and you helped start. Mm-hmm. Jeff Jarrett is going into the uh, WWE Hall of Fame. Tell us about that. Well, I'm excited about that for Jeff. I mean, really am. Uh, you know, the, to uh, be up there with somebody that you actually uh, knew from, I mean, not, way before he even started wrestling. You know, I was partners with his dad before Jeff even, uh, you know, even, even thought about getting into the business. Jerry I mean, I've Jarrett. known Jeff yeah. since he was a, just a kid. Yeah. And then, um, so yeah, for him to come along and, and be included into that illustrious Hall of Fame, I think that's really pretty cool. Yeah. I, I feel I'm, I, you know, I'm I'm real proud of him, and I'm I'm proud of myself for that <laughs> for having a hand and getting the guys, you know, like that all, all the way from the start to the to the finish there. Yes. Now you always and, you know, another, another guy. There was another guy that's that's going in there this time too. Was uh, uh, he he 
basically he was from Kentucky and, and got his start. I mean, very first uh, place he wrestled was down in Memphis, the territory, the Hillbilly Gym. Yes, yes, that's uh, right. Yes, he started down there. I, I, I've never, I gave him the gimmick. I bought it out and I bought him this, uh, I, I went out this. and I bought him this uh, real nice um, motorcycle jacket and everything. And, and we gave him the name Harley Davidson. I remember that. I remember that yes. now. Yeah, and we put him with, with, with Roger Smith, mm -hmm. uh, and he was he was Dirty Roads. Dirty Roads, right, right. Yes. I do remember that, but I didn't know he started his career down there. Um, yeah. Also, uh, now I know for a fact that you always had a thing about ECW, calling it extreme crappy wrestling, but the extreme Dudley crappy wrestling. Right? <laughs> but the, I never forgot that. But the Dudleys are going, who made their name really in the ECW, they're going into the Hall right. of Fame this year. Yeah, that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's, uh, I didn't, I don't want to say I didn't like a lot of the people there, but I mean, there was a, there was sort of a little bit of a legit type of, Eat between, even though I was the only one that went over from the WWE and worked with them on their own pay per views and stuff like that, but there was still a little bit of heat. I think some from some of the things I said when they made their first, um, when they made their first appearance there in the WWE, you know, when they sort of invaded in the WWE and some of the things I said about them um, in commentary, I think some of them sort of really took it kind of, kind of to heart. And, and, but, you know, me, I mean, I was just, Stuff I did with everybody, yeah. I mean, Stu and Helen Hart and all the you know Fabulous Mula and, and May Young, but but some of those guys. Uh, but I always I always really got along really well with uh, Bubba Ray and, and Steve Ontop. Yeah. They, 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 yeah, they were really cool guys. Well, you you're even uh, uh, at the beginning. I mean, you and Paul Heyman were not the best of friends, but now uh, now from what talking to you, I know that you and Paul are very cool with each other. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But then, yeah, there was a time but then, but that came up when, when he was just getting started down in our territory as well. And I was booking the territory and he was just, he was, I don't know, something happened about, and I can't even remember all the details, but something happened about a batch where he let us book him or made promos and stuff for this scaffold match. And then, uh, you know, we do this. So then we advertised that Paul, it was Paul Dangerously at the time. Yes. And we advertised that Paul Dangerously was going to be in the scaffold match. And so then we, you know, we advertised that. And a big crowd that night, I think it was in Louisville. And and, uh, and then all of a sudden, there, I thought it was a joke at first, but he just said, I can't go up on a scaffold. I said, what do you mean you can't go up on a scaffold? He said, I can't really, I can't, scare, I, I cannot Terrifying. go up there. I can't, I'm right. scared of heights. Right. So why'd you let us book this boy kill us, book this <laughs> night? Anyway, something, anyway, somebody, I don't know, we came to blows or something, and I might have hit him in the mouth or something, or I don't know what. Anyway, but there was some heat between the two of us for a long time, but now it's, it's that's all, all in the past. All Everything's good. All history. Then uh, Ivory yeah. is going in as the. Uh, I, th I, th I think that, I think he's got me back. When they uh, became one of the, the old guys, him and Austin Idol, time they were to shave my head in Memphis, Tennessee. I remember that. I pitch. remember that. Yeah. We, we had pictures of that. Um, Ivory is going in as well as the uh, yeah. as the uh, lady this year. And um, uh, Mark Henry has been announced. He was the Mark uh, the Henry. Fun. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, bet you that, I'll bet you that Mark Henry said the same thing that I said when they asked him about doing it. And that was like, wait, and I'm not yet. I'm not ready to go yet. <laughs> Is it really? Uh, really? I mean, yeah. Well, well I mean, I, I bet you. I don't know. And then maybe not. But I, I just know that in my case, when they called in 2007 and said, you know, we put you and Jr. and everything, in, and I, I just, said, I actually said, no, I don't want to do it because, I, you know, I always look at the Hall of Fame as being like the baseball or football hall of fame that sure. you didn't even get in until you, after your career was over. Right. But uh, then, then Vince came and explained it to me and said, no, we're, you know, this is about what you've done up to this point And, uh, and we think it's worthy and all that. And that's cool. And so, um, and once he explained it to me like that, that was cool that I didn't have to not 
you know, that I didn't have to quit wrestling and that sort of thing. And so I'm sure that's the same way with Mark. I'm certain that Mark is not ready to quit, you know, no. uh, to quit wrestling or anything like that. And, uh, did we lose you, Jerry? You still there? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. Here? Yeah, somebody said your food's getting cold, so I'll, I'll let let you go. For, <laughs> now, there's, there's one thing that people. And, and what, one other thing, one other thing about Mark that yes, I'm excited please. about is, is Mark is uh, I had his first match ever. Really? In the WWE. Really, I didn't. I don't remember that, but now that you brought that up, it sounds very familiar. It does. Yes, I sure did. And what was the result of that match? Oh my gosh, uh, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point I can't remember. That's, no, he won. He, 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 of course, won. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's absolutely amazing. Um, one yeah, question. I, I, I never remember. He swatted me on the back as I was. Uh, I'm still using. Uh, he swatted me on the back as I was going by, and and it knocked me completely out of the ring. And uh, I looked up and when I landed at the at the end of the bump. I looked up and I was just like looking eye to eye with. with man at the announce table and, and i just said oh my gosh this is he hit you that hard that's like the old joke there was a comedy team <laughs> called martin and rossi do you remember them <laughs> jerry are you there i'm here uh, do you remember the comedy team of uh marty allen and steve rossi <laughs> marty, marty allen and who? steve rossi uh the guy little guy used to go hello there all the time. Yes, I did. Yes. So did. he yes. he played a fighter one time, and they asked him. They said, uh, um, "What was the, the your your uh, uh, your toughest thing that ever happened to me?" He said, "One time this guy uh, this guy hit me, and he saw a familiar face in the third row." And the announcer said, "Well, whose face was it?" He said, "It was m mine. My opponent hit me so hard, oh. I wound up in the third row." Yes. All right. So here's. I'm going to I'm gonna have to use that. From now you can. On, Mark you can. You first. can. So now here's something. Before I let you go back to dinner and uh, and Lauren and yeah, because Peyton. Lauren's getting really mad. No, no. Real. Here we go. This is the last question because people are always asking me about this. Always, they want to know when Andy Kaufman is going into the celebrity wing of the WWE Hall of Fame. You and I have a huge history with Andy, and I tell people, I don't know. So, where is this from your point of view? Well, I got to say the same thing. I don't know. I mean, I don't think there's anybody better that would be perfect to go into the celebrity ring, but for some reason, I don't, I, it, it's like, I don't even hear, ever hear his name get mentioned. Really? I don't, I don't understand. No, but I'm not in that crowd either. You know, I'm not in one of the people that, you know, make the make decision. The decisions yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. So who's, who's not in the I whole. I think he's certainly disturbing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Who's not in the Hall of Fame that you think belongs in at this point? Oh, gosh. Is there one person that you're going like beside Andy Kaufman that I can't believe he's not in there yet? <laughs> yeah. Gosh, Bill, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Uh, right, that's I fair. Think about it. And we'll, when we see each other in uh, New Orleans, we'll discuss it. All right. I need you to get back to... Uh, Lauren and Peyton and yes. uh, thank and, you very uh, much. And Domo Arigato uh, for doing this. And uh, uh, I want to thank you also for uh, we've been friends and wrestling contacts forever. And I really cherish our relationship and just wanted to put that out there. Well, thank you, Bill. I really appreciate you too. My pleasure. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of dinner. Okay. Thanks, Bill. I couldn't, I'm sorry, I couldn't ask any of your, I couldn't ask any of your questions to him because he's, uh, see, he said he forgot. And we, he and I planned this. Um, we tried to get it done last week and I had a whole series of questions down here to uh, ask him about uh, WrestleMania. I wanted to get his predictions for WrestleMania, but now uh, we weren't able to do that. So right now, we turn the page of our online, online, yes, it's not Arn Anderson, our online magazine. And let's go right now to um, TV. Travis Voltz, one of my favorite correspondents in the universe. And every week, 
every week without failure, he sends us the rankings for Monday Night Raw. So let's click on Travis. Hey, 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 Travis. Hey, howdy, howdy. Howdy, 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 fans. T. Volts back again to give you the Wait a audio. minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. See, I have to take the phone out of here and put it back into the computer. All right. And now let's make like that didn't happen and let's go. Howdy, 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 Travis. Uh, bring us the. Thanks, Bill. You're and welcome. Howdy, 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 fans. T. Volts back again to give you the audio raw top 10 or the legendary Bill After. Well, thank you. Hey, fans. If you have anything to say about these top 10, please let me know on the Twitter. I am at PW Paper Champion. Now, without any further ado, ado. your raw top 10 as compiled by me and my team for this week. Coming in at number 10 on the losing end of his main event match, the Big Red Mayor, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe. Pain. Yeah. Number nine, also a loser at the pay window this week, is Sheamus. Number eight, picking up a victory but not getting an answer from the dead man. Of course, I'm talking about free agent John Cena. We are just one more week to go until WrestleMania, at least one more Raw, that is. Will we see the dead man or will he roll in? Otherwise, he's here. Number seven is Woken Matt Hardy. Number six, Elias, who picked up a victory on Monday Night Raw. Speaking of Monday Night Raw, that brings us to number five, Monday Night Rollins, Seth Rollins. Yeah. Number four, the other contender for the AIC title, Finn Balor. Number three, the monster among men. Braun Strowman. Can anybody stop the big man or will they just keep getting those hands? That's what I think. Number two happen. goes to Intercontinental Champion and hometown boy this past Monday, The Miz. That leaves, of course, your number one contender. Who is it? And most likely the man to close out WrestleMania, Roman reigns yeah what will be the reaction at wrestlemania when it goes off the air towards roman reigns will he be walking out the loser or will he be walking out the champion hey speaking of champions that leaves us with nobody else except your universal champion brock lesnar Barack. hey fans that's it for this week's raw top 10 Thanks, and back to you, Bill. Well, thank you so much, T. Volts. And by the way, Barack Lesnar, as you know, his uh, uh, his chief advisor there, his only advisor there, is Paul Heyman, who used to be, as Jerry Lawler mentioned, Paul E. Dangerously. And did you know, and there's a chapter in my book about people that started their career off in the wrestling business and became part of the business as photographers for some of the various magazines that I worked for, that George Napolitano worked for. Um, and one of those guys was Paul Heyman before he was even Paulie Dangerously. He had a, uh, a fan bulletin called the Wrestling Times and he used to shoot pictures um, and do interviews, and he'd send pictures to me, he'd send them to George's magazines, and uh, yeah, he was quite the photographer. There were a lot of other people as well. Uh, Sonny was a photographer. Um, Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette actually is the guy, is the guy who photographed, you know, we were talking about Andy Kaufman and Jerry Lawler. See, I say Kaufman. That's how you say it in Pennsylvania, New York, Kaufman. A lot of people say Kaufman. Then it would be K-O-O-F or C-O-U-G-F. <laughs> anyway, but uh, Jim Cornette, before he became a racket tier, I just made that up, a racket tier, not bad. Um, he was a photographer and he shot that Andy Kaufman 
Jerry Lawler match. Before we go to our next guest, who is uh, waiting in the wings here, I will go and uh, let's go into your mailbag. Mailbag being um, your current questions, but I have a question. Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Or are you a coward? John Cena's interviews regarding The Undertaker, haven't they been like really off the charts? They've been amazing. They've been absolutely amazing. Okay, let me go back to where you fans started writing at the beginning here. Hello to everybody, by the way. <coughs> um, howdy from Minneapolis. Um, do, uh, how long, Bill, how long have you been in the wrestling business? The godson wants to know. Godson, this is the godfather. Um, I started watching, started watching wrestling in about 1963. Uh, I've been in the business, actually, it might have been before 1963, probably 10 or 11, so probably in the late, late, late 50s, early 60s, but I've been in the business since 1970. It's in my book. It's, it's uh, Fix This Ring for Bill. What I don't know what ring we're talking about. Um, WrestleCon looks fantastic. Also, the Ring of Honor, Super Card of Honor. I wish I could be in two places at the same time. I'd like to be in uh, at NXT, and I'd like to be, of course, at, uh, well, I will be at Ring of Honor. You know that? Speaking about Cody Rhodes, I'm not going to speak about Cody Rhodes. I want to talk about Brandy Rhodes. Almost 17,000 of you have watched that interview that I have done on OneWrestlingVideo.com with Brandy Rhodes, and you're all enamored with her. And I can tell you that um, a lot of people say, does she look that great in person? She looks even better in person. She really does. She really does. Um, bring back the mask, dude. Insane Bill Maskolo does have his own um, Facebook page. So that mask dude will be opening my show in uh, New Orleans. Go to kfabevents.com. Uh, I'm sorry, kfabevents on Facebook. Uh, you can follow them on Twitter and come to see me at Awesome Wrestling Entertainment, um, their table at WrestleCon, and Insane Bill Mascolo might might make an appearance. Um, Velocity Plays. Bill, I heard rumors that Bobby Lashley is now supposed to return in the Royal Rumble 2019. I heard the same thing, but who knows until it actually happens. Uh, Saliva's Toast. What a great name. Uh, Bill, do you agree that the New Day and the likes are embarrassing the business? No, I don't think they're embarrassing the business. They're they're part of, you know, the business is both wrestling, sport, and entertainment, and they're the entertainment part. So they're fun. You know, you, you don't have to watch when they come on. You can turn it off. But there's a lot of people that uh, like them. And they're really, they're really cool guys. Uh, Teddy Two Stoned Heart. Welcome back from Ireland, my boy. Um, insane Bill Mascolo left his uh, Barry Manilow disc here, so I'm, I'm a I'm a fan of Low. I'm a big. I yeah, I know every one of his songs. When I go to karaoke bars, we should all go out for karaoke in New Orleans. Come to my show, and maybe after the show, we can find a karaoke place to go and sing. Okay, so. Cowboy Bill Watts. Let's get him on me after chat here. Again, you people who uh, can count clicks here. I hope you're not finding his number, but let's see if we can get Cowboy Bill Watts on the line here. It's ringing. Is, is that Cowboy Bill Watts? <laughs> Gee whiz, it's been a hundred years since I've seen you. It, it, is this the same guy that turned his back on Bruno San Martino? Let me tell you, that, Bruno San Martino, 
was one of the great, the great experiences in the business. He's a classy guy, a, a host and a man of his word. When I was growing up, everybody, welcome. Uh, we're live, by the way, on uh, on Bill Apter's video podcast magazine. And I'm thrilled to talk to you because you were always, um, uh, beside being one of the great wrestlers of all time and one of the great people in the business, you've always been a, a very sincere gentleman to me and any other members of uh, the magazine society that approached you all those years. Well, thank you, Bill. You know, it's kind of easy with the guys that I got to know because you guys, uh, your word was good and you loved the business. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So that made it pretty easy. Plus, I had a guy that became my right hand that I hired right out of college and he worked his way all the way up. Jim Ross, who's still gone on to be a very key executive in the, in, in the two major organizations that were left after the mega trend change. Yeah, yes, yes. By the way, I want to thank uh, Doug Ward and Awesome Wrestling Entertainment for uh, setting up this uh, interview tonight. And you're going to be, I, last, oh, about three weeks ago, I did an interview with your son, Eric, and I, I felt his goosebumps there when he was talking about that one of his dreams was to do uh, to do something years and years ago, but we can't do it anymore, of like Dusty and his son or sons, uh, Fritz von Erich and his boys, and you and he, Eric, to all be together in one room signing all these generations, the Orton family and all that. So obviously that's passed by. But he told me when uh, he asked Doug Ward, he said, would you be interested in do, having my father and I? And Doug jumped at it. So is this the first time, as far as I know, that you and Eric will be doing an autograph session together, correct? Sure. Yeah, it is, Bill. Yeah, he called me all excited about it and was telling me about Doug and Awesome awesome Wrestling Entertainment yeah. and the WrestleCon event. I, I haven't done any, any autograph signings in a while. Oh, I know that. And, uh, of course, New Orleans was always one of my favorite locations. We used to rent the Superdome four times a year, and it was exciting. And my uh, a close personal friend of mine was the old commissioner's son, Pepe Bruno, who became yeah. Speaker of the House for several years there. And so many great fans and people and, and all that. And so what a wonderful opportunity. And uh, so we're going to do it. We're going to go. And, it'll, it, you know, my age, uh, you know, we've lost so many uh, that have transitioned. And, uh, you know, I, I, it, I probably won't be around that much longer either. So it's an opportunity to do something with my son. And, and he's been wanting to do it and have some fun and see some bands and, See, so a bunch of the other guys, I guess, this WrestleCon thing, everything's gotten so big compared to how it used to be. I, oh, yeah. So I'm sure I'm going to see a lot of people that were my peers and or people that I uh, that I uh, interacted with. The WrestleCon is uh, similar, of course, as the wrestling uh, end of what Comic-Con and Wizard World is. And the first, when I went to the first one, I was just amazed at the amount of people from all over the world that make WrestleCon and WrestleMania, of course, uh, a destination vacation now. Yeah, it's uh, it's really really exciting. Uh, you know, I know the, I think the last autograph signing I did was down there in New Orleans for a Mid South reunion of some kind, same weekend as uh, as uh, WrestleMania was, and uh, you know it's such a huge event, and so you know it's just another chance to. Go see a bunch of old friends and, and yeah. a bunch of fans and a bunch of the peers and and to do something exciting with my son Eric. I'm proud of him. He's clawed his way back from a lot of adversarial things, yes. and uh, so I'm proud of him. So, um, what you know? What year did you start? Because you know everybody's saying, "Oh my God, this is great! WrestleMania is at the Superdome." But when you first started cards at the Superdome, I came down to those things. They were just amazing. What year right. did you start those uh, those shows at the Superdome? Oh, I can't remember. I'm okay. so bad on things. That's a Jim Austin. <laughs> it was 1970 that I first started buying into Leroy McGurk uh, Championship Wrestling, and then so it was probably uh, it was probably after I'd gone to Atlanta and after I'd gone to Florida so I'd say it's probably around 1975 or something like that that we started in 1976. I can't remember. I know it scared us to death because the the opening nut was uh, 
just get the doors open about 20 grand. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Was, yeah. That was big money in those days. It was. And, it was. And I think our first gross was right around close to $90,000. So that was, that was huge uh, for us. That was such a, such an impact. And uh, uh, I know uh, Ernie Ladd and, and some of the other people. Out so there wait, wait, there. wait one second. Wait a second. See, you just said something. When I, and I told your son this, the first name that I always think of when somebody mentions wrestling at the Superdome was always Ernie Ladd. Yeah, Ernie, you know, Ernie was, he and I were rookies the same year in pro football. Of course, he stuck with it and I didn't. And I didn't know him very well, but we got to know each other. And Ernie impacted my life in such a huge way. He, uh, he and I had some great conversations and, uh, you know, and Ernie just became like a brother to me. I mean, yeah. I love the guy so much. He, uh, when Ernie fought that, that stomach cancer, he fought it for three years. And yeah. I'll never forget when he knew that he wasn't going to make it. And we were talking on the phone. And I said, well, big fella, I'm kind of upset that, that, that the Lord has taken you home before he takes me. And he said, why? I said, because as much as you eat, there'll be nothing left for my banquet. <laughs> and he started to laugh. And he was in so much pain. But he started laughing, and Roz, his wife, Roz, texts me every year, once a year or so. And uh, Ernie was just, Ernie was one of the all-time great human beings, and uh, I know, and helped. We did so much together, you know. Uh, uh, we uh, we made, I think, we made a huge impact on the black athlete in our business. Sure. In that we uh, we really and truly invested ourselves in it, and we got junkyard dog. We we had so many people. Uh, Ron Simmons. I mean, there were so many things that came out of that, and came out of uh, being being around there. Well, one of the one of the uh, uh, the most dramatic incidents in the history of pro wrestling was when, uh, and you had the uh, the kickoff to this whole thing, the the payoff to this whole thing. And I remember I was there. Was the junkyard dog blinding incident? My goodness, that's right. Yeah, I said, yeah, in the in the auditorium downtown, in the auditorium. Yes, with the with the Freebirds. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Just tell the people yeah. who some of the people who are some of the younger people might not realize uh, the the way the fans felt back in those days when someone like Junkyard Dog was blinded by another wrestler. Uh, that was well, well my, you, yeah. Go ahead. You got to remember the wrestling was completely different then. Yes. And, uh, uh, you know, one time Sting told me, he said, you know, Bill, he said, the wrestling's changed since you got out of the business. I said, yeah, Sting, you've never had to fight your way to the ring or, not, or fight your way back to the dressing room. I said, back when we wrestled, the fans really got into our sport. And at times uh, we had we had pretty serious situations with, with, the, with the anger of the fans, uh, you know, toward – the event, I said, in in a, in a way where they were so participatory and they felt it and, and it got right to them. So, and Junkyard Dog, you know, that, that who that's going to beat that dog, that thing they started with, uh, with the Saints, that originated with JYD in the world. Yes, yes. You know, and yes. Uh, so we had him over so strong. And then he got even stronger through this event. And it was, it was, it was a magic event. And uh, Junkyard Dog was, so at that time, was he was one of the greatest kids that uh, I'd met, and uh, you know we took his. Actually, it was Jake Jake Roberts, uh, Grizzly Smith's son, who clued us about him. His name was Sylvester Ritter. Yeah, we brought him in, gave him the name, gave him the gimmick and the change, and and uh, we he was really limited in the ring, tremendously limited. So we had a but he had that had charisma. Bring him along. He had yeah. that charisma. Oh, he yeah. had that dynamite charisma. And Ernie Ladd saw that and and knew how to take it. And uh, I used to have to stop him every now and then when we were doing interviews with TV and said, you all explain to me what you just said before I let that go out of the air. <laughs> right. That, that's like, and may you rest in peace, people saying that they couldn't understand Jimmy Snooker's interviews as well. Um, yeah. But it was amazing to photograph those matches and have thousands upon thousands of fans yelling, J.Y.D., JY, oh, right. my goodness, he was so. And then I remember um, Michael Hayes and Terry Gordy and Buddy Roberts had to be protected by the uh, city police to get them oh, out of yeah. the building. That doesn't happen anymore. 
No, 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 no. It's so different, and, and the, the guys still work as hard and are better athletes and everything else, and bigger and stronger. They are. There's just there's something that's not there, you know, and and there's not any mystique to it. And I think the mystique was a was really an interesting thing. And, and uh, you know, I think the first time we went in the in the dome, I think it was Ernie Ladd against Ray Candy. Yes, yes, and, Ray Candy, and, sure. And I didn't think Ray Candy could, could. I liked Ray Candy. He was a great kid, but I didn't think he could draw any money. But Ernie convinced me he could, and and Ernie did it with him. Uh, you know, we had Ernie in a single match against Andre the Giant in the Superdome before Vince did the big thing in Pontiac Mission. I think Michigan I was there. With, uh, yeah. Andre and, and, the, and the Hulk, yeah. I used to love Ernie Ladd when they, uh, Boyd Pierce would, or Jim Ross would put the microphone up to him and he'd go, Mr. TV announcer. He always did that. I always remember that yeah. with uh, with Ernie Ladd. Um, what would you say was and it could be in the ring or in the office. What was your biggest home run when you look back at your storied career? Oh, Bill, uh, I think that's in stages, you know. I mean, uh, certainly uh, the first biggest stage was to be in Madison Square Garden and yes. uh, have, a, have a sellout there. And I think one of the sellouts was Sam Martino and I, because it sold out many times, but this one set a record for attendance in the I tell people the reason it's the record was because the fire marshals failed to show up that night, and Vince's dad <laughs> put three or four thousand, maybe five thousand standing room only in there. <laughs> so there were more people in there uh, than, than, than they ever had for any event in the old garden. Uh, you know, I, I think I got to be the main event in the garden maybe four or five times. I'll never forget San Martino, I think, was the main event in the garden 187 times. Oh, it was all the time. I don't think any, any human being ever. Ever, ever was close to what San Martino did yeah, in the garden, yeah. but but that was a that was a huge thing to uh, to uh, be all the way from a little town outside Oklahoma City and to see, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. so there were there were a series of events, you know, I mean, uh, to be excited about, and uh, getting into the promotion, and it was hard the first year in the promotion because uh, Leroy didn't have any talent that was really established or could draw a lot of money and then we also had one of the worst winners we've ever had and you know my area it was so logistically horrible for the yes. wrestlers as far yes. as the traveling and uh, so there was a lot of things so then to go into go into uh, the superdome with a guy named seymour smith who was our partner on that he he owned the uh, television station the uhf station in new orleans and uh, it was just a huge event and it was successful uh, but there were so many things. I think uh, uh, that some of the things that we did in Atlanta. Oh yeah. Certainly, yeah. some of the things. Some of the things we did in Florida. The year I, I went down and booked it with Eddie Graham. Eddie mm -hmm. Graham was one of the most fantastic people in the business I'd ever been around, and I, I was so fortunate to get to study up to some of the greats. You know, to uh, Bern Gagne, to to Vince's dad, to uh, Roy Shires, to. Uh, 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 people like that, Jim Barnett, I mean, yeah. people like that, that that were movers and shakers in our business that I get to be around and and, uh, and uh, I learned from them. And it was, what it was made you, an exciting, what, exciting business. What made you go from, I, I always wanted to ask you this, and I just thought of this again. What made you go from being a wrestler into the business end of it? What did, uh, that's, yeah, I, People said they always knew I was going to be. I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah. I was in Minneapolis, and, and Leroy and I were talking, and Leroy was so disgusted and discouraged, and wanted me to come home and become his partner. Then Leroy was one that would always could change his mind overnight. He was really uh, uh, paranoid. Leroy. So then he decided I didn't have enough experience, so he wanted Burn, Ganya, and Fritz von Erich in the deal. So the initial deal, all of a sudden. I was only going to get 5%, and I just didn't go for that. I wouldn't go for it, mm -hmm. but I started out with, with, with uh, shoot, I think, like 19% or something, and uh, ended, ended up with all of it. Yeah. But uh, you, you learned uh, as you were as going. A matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I bought Burn, I bought Burn and Fritz out of the out of the business and left it where just Lilo and I owned it uh, <laughs> with their own. Re I retained their earnings and paid them with their own earnings. <laughs> Do you uh do you still do you still tune in 
uh, these days and watch uh, um, watch any of the products? No, no, okay. no. I, Just curious. You know, for me, that that's a frustrating thing because I can't watch it without a critical eye of, of, of how I how I, I think it could be how good they've done or how much how I think it could be better. I mean, you know, so it's and it's a different product. Uh, you know, back uh, when we were in it, the the action was concentrated on the on the wrestlers in the ring. As a matter of fact, I always told my commentators, it's not you that put the fanny air at 14 or 17 inches, it's the wrestlers. Yes. And if right. I hear you starting to take over the show, you'll be gone. Right. It's all it's, about the wrestlers. It's always going to be about the wrestlers. Right. And, and that's not the way Vince does it. And so, you know, they can be carrying on a conversation that has nothing to do with what's going on in the ring. And so there's a lot of different things, but, you know, he's been super successful and He's certainly a oh, marketing sure. genius. He's a workaholic. He's a he's a genius. Yes, yes, uh, yes. You know, it, uh, and his wife, it was extremely sharp too. And look, Trump's got her involved in a serious position. Yes, what a small business for that. Yeah. yeah, she's yes, she's a perfect person for that. So, anyway, I uh, I uh, I think that the business. Uh, and Vince and I had several discussions about it. I I, I told him I thought that he hurt himself. By putting everybody out of business because he had nowhere to farm his talent and or to get new talent because everything he then has is shown immediately. And I don't care if it's chocolate cake, everybody gets tired of it that weekend and week yeah. out. So he needed a place really where he could send guys to, to, to get them out of his area to, to cycle them. Because, you know, yeah. that's one thing his dad was so good at. His dad would call you. And, let's say I had Waldo Von Eric wrestling for me. And he said, Bill, I'm going to take Waldo and start him in New York. About three months down the line, he'd give me the date and said, I need him for television on these dates. Uh, can we get that worked out? Well, I, there's no way I could make Waldo as much money as, 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 his da- as Vince's dad could in, in, the, in the big markets he was in. And I'd say, sure. And we'd work it out because he would treat you like he was consulting you about it when he'd already made it. He already had it all lined up, and yeah, I didn't want to. Yeah. I always wanted Waldo back. Waldo was always a money maker, so I wasn't going to stand on it. So then Vince would say, I'll tell you what, Bill, you're always so nice to do business with. I'll give you an extra week on Andre the Giant. Oh, well, see, that that's meant great. I had an extra week of solid sellout. Yes, absolutely. He knew how to do uh, business. Before I let you go here, um, two, two things, uh, and I, I don't know the answer to this, so I'm asking you, Joel Watts, where is he these days? Joel is in Tulsa, I believe. You know, after the divorce, <laughs> that all soured. And, okay, uh, I don't know. I don't think I've seen Joel asking. about once or twice since the, since the divorce, and he went his way and I went mine. And, okay. uh, but I, I, I understand he was still working in television for a long time, and some of the stuff he did got some awards. And Joel was extremely skilled at certain things. Yes. I, maybe not in delegating authority, but he certainly was skilled in what he did as far as artistic and and it being well done. He did a wonderful job for us in, a, in so many ways in television in, as, as it was changing so rapidly, you know. Absolutely. And the last question, whatever happened to that sweet lady I used to talk to all the time when I called your office? Was it uh, Georgie Ann? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, a, what, a, what a jewel she was. She, she sure was. was. And you know what? She was so good and my books always balanced. And the boys would always call her to test the waters if they knew they were in trouble. <laughs> and she loved the business and loved it. She died a few years back. Uh, bless her heart. She was oh, just okay. fantastic. I wondered. I was, just, I was just thinking the other day, she and I used to, uh, I'd already sold out of the business by the end. And I'd go over to her house and we we sat there and watched the OJ trial. You know? Oh, and my goodness. It, you know, the, the drama of the OJ Simpson trial, you know, <laughs> But she was really, really a special person, and uh, okay, I, I, I just so wanted blessed, to see the the um uh, a lot of people, uh, as you know, you had legions of fans, and then you had le- you had some people that said, "Boy, Bill Watts was a real hard ass to work for." What do you say to those <laughs> people? What do you say? You to know, them? you know, I think that they have their opinions and they, that, that they have a right. Most of them don't know me and they're going by hearsay. So yeah. if somebody had a hard on for me, well, then they're going <laughs> not say the good. You know, and I don't give a damn what they said. You know, Vince Lombardi and Mike Ditka were pretty tough coaches too, but they were pretty successful. So maybe I just had a little, a little bit more stringent hands-on approach. I yeah. ran mine like a business. 
Yes. That's why bottom line wise, I end up making so much money. I'm in it like a business. Exactly. And, and uh, that's and I saw way, you do one, that. One fun thing, I, one great memory in New Orleans was Muhammad Ali worked for me on one of the right. films. He and Bundini Brown. I took Muhammad Ali to Dookie Chase's to dinner in, down in the ghetto in New Orleans. And what a night that was. That was oh, so much boy. fun. I know Dookie Chase and his wife just went crazy. With he, was, he was one of my uh, all-time heroes, Muhammad Ali. I <laughs> went because Beside the wrestling magazines, we did uh, boxing magazines. And I traveled with he and Bundini and, and, and Angelo Dundee. You got to say that like Howard oh, yeah, Cosell. Sure, but sure. I traveled well, with them for years. Sure. Chris Dundee was Eddie's promoter in Miami. Yes, I know that. But uh, I, to this day, uh, when when I do my one man show and people are asking me to do uh, imitations, I always do. Uh -huh. I like your speed, I like your style, but your pay so cheap, I won't be back for a while. He had that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well look, was the one that came up with the float like a butterfly thing. Like I know that Rumble, young man, Rumble. I was very close friends with. Uh, with that whole crew, so I'm glad you just kicked that memory. Well, in. Ali, Ali was such a uh, he was one of the most phenomenal athletes ever, and you know, and he, uh, I think at one time he's probably the most recognizable figure in the world. Oh yeah, and you know, uh, he had said that when he was growing up, he watched Gorgeous George, and that's what gave him that that style, that's that right. rhythm of speaking. Yeah. Right. Well, Which, Bill, let me just say this. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And we likewise. don't get to talk that often. I, I have nothing but the highest respect for you. Likewise. And you know uh, looking forward to New Orleans for the two days and yes. enjoying it and seeing people and getting surprised by people I, I don't even know probably are still alive or maybe didn't know I still alive. <laughs> and Doug Ward, thank you for setting this up. And uh, uh, I, I can't wait. I'm going to be sitting right near you, uh, signing copies of my book and chatting with you Beautiful. and uh i've got a million million great memories to run past you as all the fans will be and this is a special occasion because it's the first time ever and it will be at wrestlecon at the awesome wrestling entertainment area bill watts i love you in a guy way i always say that to people and uh well, you know if they know you and me, they know that's the only way. Yeah. As far as we can <laughs> but, but the bottom line is that I, I love you too, brother. I have great respect for you. Thanks so thank much you. for taking the call and time to give me a call. And by the way, thank you for helping all these, for entertaining the fans through UWF and when you were a wrestler and for making such great strides in the wrestling business when the wrestling business was just the wrestling business. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, it, was, it went through a, a great metamorphosis. It sure did. And God, so, I, this uh, is terrible because I can't. I want to let you go, and yet I keep remembering now that <laughs> the the UWF cup cup when you allowed me to come down there and shoot photos. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, Doctor Death. Well, yeah, Steve you were Williams. you were, you were in on everything we did. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yes, Jim Ross would talk to me for an hour and a half on the phone. Oh, hell so yeah! Hey, you know, Jim everything. Ross never he never runs out of ideas and. Picking people's brains for ideas, and that's that's see that's what a lot of people don't know. I had a I always brought guys into my booking and everything that had offered credible ideas and 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 stuff, but they had to contribute. They had sure. to have something to bring to the table, and yeah. uh, uh, you know, so we and we had intensive booking and intensive television meetings. But that's how that's how I th I thought our business stayed so good and stayed on top of everything. That's why we. We're so tremendous. Some of the talent we we had a sixty share rating on television. I remember we outrate we outrated the the, the six o'clock news in New Orleans <laughs> with the UHF station that opened, but a lot of its signal was hitting like train. Yes, 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 yes. That's unreal. I look forward to okay. seeing you and all your fans come and see Bill Watts and his son Eric Watts and all of us at Awesome Wrestling Entertainment at Russell. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Look forward to seeing Take you next care, week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wow, that for me personally, that um, wow, that was amazing. Uh, we still have the uh, thank you, Bill Watts. Boy, I really enjoyed that. Right now, though, swimming in the water is here. Uh, let's disconnect the phone. Swimming, we're going a little longer tonight, but swimming in the waters right now is the Gonzo Shark with the SmackDown Live 
rankings for this week. Good evening, humanoids. This is Gonzo Shark for Bill Shark. After's Video Magazine podcast. And I'm back again with this week's SmackDown Live men's top 10 rankings. Give it to us. So at number 10 is the show off, Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. At number nine is the former United States champion, the glorious Bobby Roode. Down a spot from last Can week at number eight is the modern day Maharaja, Jinder Mahal. Making his way into the rankings this week at number seven is the Bulgarian brute Rusev. Yeah, about time. Also making his way into the rankings this week at number six after showing that he can still go in the ring is SmackDown Live general manager Daniel Bryan. Yeah. At number five, again for the second week in a row, is Sami Zayn. And also for the second week in a row at number four is his partner in crime, Kevin Owens. And they are both looking like monster, monster heels going they into sure WrestleMania. Are. They sure are. At number three for the second week in a row is WWE champion, number one contender, the artist known as Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura. At number two, the United States champion, the Viper, Randy Orton. And at number one, just as he is every single week, WWE champion, the phenomenal AJ Styles. Yeah. Okay. You can follow me on Twitter at Gonzo Shark One and Facebook.com slash Gonzo Shark One. Until not, next time, this is the Gonzo Shark checking out. Back you, to you, Bill. You're not checking out two things. Two things. I want to, the women's ratings we want to get, but we're allowed to disagree, right? I don't think Daniel Bryan belongs in the top 10 at this point. Um, he did some great drop kicks and some other moves, but he hasn't competed yet. So Gonzo, I don't agree with you on that one. All right. So let's go back to the Gonzo Shark. Good evening, humanoids. This is Gonzo Shark. From Hello Bill again. After's video magazine podcast. And I'm here to bring you Daniel this week's Bryan. WWE Women's Top 10 Rankings. Busting our way back in at number 10 is Alexa Bliss's sidekick, Mickey James. At number nine, is the leader of the Riot Squad, Ruby Riot. Yeah. At number eight is a woman who finds herself in turmoil week after week. The hugger herself, Bailey. At number seven is a woman who's gracing the rankings for the first time ever after she beat down two thirds of Absolution on Raw. Mm -hmm. None other than Rowdy Ronda Rousey. Yeah. At number six is a woman who's been on straight fire all week. That would be Becky Lynch. At number five is a woman who showed her mean streak this week and also proved that she means business going into WrestleMania. The boss, Sasha Banks. At number four is the Raw Women's Champion, number one contender, Nia Jax. Yeah. At number three the is Strowman the SmackDown of women. Live Women's Champion, number one contender, the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. At number two, SmackDown Live Women's Champion, Charlotte. And at number one for the third <coughs> week in a row is Raw Women's Champion Alexa Bliss. Okay. You can follow me on Twitter at Gonzo Shark One, Facebook.com slash Gonzo Shark One. And you can look for all of my material Where? at onewrestling.com, yeah. Vince Russo's The Brand, and wrestlingwithwrestling.com. Until next time, this is the Gonzo Shark checking out. Out Back to, to the you, waters. Bill. Thank you very much. And I'm going to disagree with you again. Uh, in my opinion, Ronda Rousey does not belong in the top 10 at this particular point because she hasn't really um, competed in uh, in single matches. So that is it for this week. Again, we're not going live next week. I'm going to try Monday night and Tuesday night. Uh, Monday night Raw. And uh, Tuesday night SmackDown, I'm going to try and do a uh, live chat after that where I can answer all your questions. Uh, I need to get out of here so I can uh, check out what's going on on Impact Wrestling, which you should be uh, watching shortly, too. And um, that's it. Um, Bill After wants to thank you. That's me. Wants to thank you so much for being here again. And don't forget, I'm so looking forward to seeing all of you and NOLA. Go to Awesome Wrestling Entertainment on Facebook or to their website to find out everything that's going on there and who will be at WrestleCon.
go to Kayfabe Events on Facebook and Twitter as well to find out everything about my one-man show that I understand now Insane Bill Mascalo will be participating. Sam Houston will be there. Uh, C.W. Anderson, Short Sleeve Samson, and uh, you never know who else is going to uh, who else is going to show up. So uh, thank you all, and uh, it, it's just uh, great having fantastic fans like you. Thank you all for your fanship. And before I go, I have a question: Is wrestling fixed? I didn't know it was broken. Doug Ward, feel better. Can't wait to see you all in NOLA. I don't want to end the stream. No.